Welcome everyone. Well, this is different. Hi. Hello. 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 It's Juliana, the Julu mama. How's everyone doing at Friday on Friday at 2 PM? Who this is new. I don't, I don't think that uh, we've ever done a 2 PM on a Friday, but for dev floors, we will do anything. <laughs> we will do anything. We will come on whenever she says to come on. So we're so lucky. Um, so today is all about the creative soul box that was put together for November. What month are we in? <laughs> We're in December. So it's a creative soul box that I, I know. Just give me the grace as I navigate these couple of weeks with my dad and everything. I'm a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Okay. So the November box, I was just like, I really, you know, I love being able to reach out to my designer friends um, because it takes a village. <laughs> Let's just be honest. <laughs> It takes a village. Uh, you know, I love curating product. Like that's definitely my jam. I love finding stuff and I love sharing that with the creative soul members. And lots of times, you know, there's a baby that's birthing with that. And then other times it's like, you know what? I really, I really need help. I need my girlfriends. And so I reached out to Deb and I was just like, Hey, what do you think? Like, you know, it's a collection of all, um, it's a very sisterhood type of box. It has lots of powerful colors in it, yellows, um, reds, and deep purples. And it's just that very tribe, sister, powerful, yummy collection. And it's sold out. <laughs> so I'm sorry for those of you that are like, oh my God, that sounds totally delicious. But hey, if you think it sounds delicious, let me know. Let me know that I'm on the right track. And um, as I continue to shop for you, uh, I will keep that palette in, in my pocket for you. So without further ado, um, let me just tell you a little bit more. So Deb is using the small Sunweaver. This is the small one. And there's the big one. All right. And the grid on the small with a uh, small, what is she? The small sun weaver. Sorry, girlfriend. Sorry. Okay. The grid on the small sun weaver is similar to the beading grid on the wisdom warrior, but it's, it's wider. So for instance, like you're gonna, you'll be able to fit definitely like a 0.5 millimeter hemp in here. Um, maybe something a little bit thicker. Deb's going to be actually working with some materials that I'm excited about. So she'll let us know like how thick that is. So, so this grid has a lot of potential. And then of course you have, you know, the teeth up here. So like if you wanted to use something even thicker, like a yarn or a fiber or, you know, like a, what, probably like a 2.5 leather cord or something, you could just use the teeth. And then the material would lay on top of the grid. But wait, it gets better. <laughs> so there's, wait, Deb, uh, Deb will have to tell me if her has hers have anything in the back. I'm not sure that we do that anymore. I could have an original Sunweaver in my hand and not even know it and be telling you something not correct. But hey, <laughs> who am I? Just the owner. I don't know. But what I told you is the truth on the front. <laughs> So I'm going to leave it at that. Robert's probably in the background going, no, no, she doesn't have anything on the backside. But Deb will confirm because Deb's got a, a recent shipment. So without further ado, before I screw up everything, I want to bring Deb on. And her hair is looking hot. She's looking super sexy. Okay, here she comes. <laughs> How do you like that for an intro? <laughs> and her price just went up. <laughs> Hey, Deb, does your, what does the back of your sun weaver look like? It's plain. It's plain. Just plain. Yeah. This was one of the original ones from way back in the day. So just a little backstory so people don't think that I'm whatever. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter what you think, but I'm just going to tell you. <laughs> so originally she did have grids on the back side of her. So when she oh. was introduced at Jewelry Television way back in 2019, so we're also talking about back in the day when wood was like 
$16 a sheet. And then remember it went cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And I think it was like up to $62 a sheet. And we had to make some changes to keep the prices for you all the same. And so one of the things that got changed was that the Sunweaver um, is only got the grids on the front. You'd never know unless I just screwed it up. So whatever. It's all good. It's all good. She's amazing. She's fabulous. You're going to love her. And just to clarify my faux pas, Deb, how you doing? You've been everywhere. Like I, I'm like scrolling. Whoops. I'm scrolling. And there's Deb. And I'm scrolling. And there's Deb. I'm like, how many lives can this girl do in one day? <laughs> all right. You tell them. You tell them. <laughs> um yeah i i've been i've been um around lately <laughs> um and i'm having Can't a blast here. yes you yeah yeah i've been having a blast it's um there i have a lot of things um in the works at all times and um you can't really see behind me but i i cleared off all the the big like project boxes and they're all on the floor now so that you We're can't share them today because it's kind of it's kind of scary all the like craziness that all this stuff is. So it's, yeah, it's I, it's down on the floor. I totally of, understand. We both have a lot of But you know what? I just want to. I always go back to that <laughs> night at the restaurant when we were eating Mexican food all those years ago at Tucson, uh, 2018 maybe or 17. And you know, you just you definitely had whether you spoke it or not, I knew it. Like you had a vision, you had goals, you knew where you wanted to get to. You got, you know, you retired your day job and you yeah. knew that you wanted to really birth the designer, jewelry designer, even more. That's, that is you. And it's so cool for me to just kind of like chill out and watch you do it <laughs> and do it so incredibly well. I have so much respect for you. And, Thank um, you. I'm so honored and grateful that you would take the box and you would share your wisdom mm -hmm. with the creative soul members because they are, um, well, my entire community is delicious, but a lot of these folks have been with me for three years, like nonstop. They've been on this, they've been on the path of subscription. <laughs> it's like <laughs> that's an honor, you know, that speaks volumes. And when I do reach out to other designers, I always reach for the best. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you're going to, you're going to show them how to take some components that were in their box because they had a plethora of different things. Um, and you're going to do something new and different. So I'm going to turn it over to you because okay. uh, my gift is talking. <laughs> you are very gifted. Product development and talking. <laughs> so we're just going to shut the jewel up and Thank you. And I love you. And I will be back here <laughs> watching. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. <laughs> so um, thank you, Juliana. This project, um, so I'm actually going to flip my camera because, and I'm going to actually shut it off while I do that. So I am still here. I promise you. Um, I'm going to keep talking. I just want to get the camera set up. And now you should be able to see what i have so juliana um sent me the creative soul box um and this has such a cool eclectic combination of things um and the first thing that i saw that jumped out at me are these amazing check button beads i think that's what they call them they're like a button shape and they are, there's greens and um, copper, purple, and like a white wash. Um, it is just really, really, really cool, um, this, this little collection of beads. So this screamed at me and I thought, okay, what can I do with these? And I've had just a little bit of an obsession with macrame lately. Um, I, I, I'm going to say it's not a little, it's a lot. Um, and I thought, I wonder if we could do macrame on one of the looms. And when I saw these beads, I thought, oh my gosh, I don't know. Like this might be a little out there, but I tried it and it actually worked. And this is 
the product of my my trial and error and it's just kind of like a little cluster you know each there's three you know there's trios of these beads little clusters of the beads with macrame in between and it's not really like i'm calling it microme because it's really really tiny macrame so it really showcases the beads and almost looks like the beads are just kind of suspended out there um and then the closure is always challenging i think i mean at least it's challenging for me and i was able to use a lobster claw and then i um, attached just a jump ring a large jump ring to close it so I love this. I think this is a really cool bracelet. I, I will be wearing this. It's something I'm gonna cherish and keep for myself. Um, so let me just give you a little bit of how we're gonna do this and what we're gonna do it with. So I've got enough beads because Juliana gave us a plethora of those. Um, the material we're gonna use is um, this is a brand, I'm not even sure I'm going to say it right, Gudebrod. Um, it's spelled G-U-D-E-B-R-O-D, and it's waxed polyester thread. And um, Danielle Wicks actually turned me on to this. And I've been obsessed with it ever since. In fact, I think I have a date with Michaels later today to go and get some. They're one of the companies that you can buy this retail from. Um, John Bead is another place that you can get it. That's how I got it um, from Danielle. And it is according to, um, so this is a bobbin of it. You can get a larger package of it. Um, this is 75 feet and it is 0.38 millimeters. So it's tiny. And that's why I say it's sort of microme, not macrame, because we're doing very small little macrames, little macrame knots. So this is a this is black, and I thought, you know, the black was perfect for these black beads. Um, and I think um, retail, you can get this at Michael's in black and white or like an off-white, maybe like a brown color, but John Bead has it in a bunch of colors. So it is made in the USA um, from what I understand. So this is a cool product and it just feels nice in your hands. Like you can get a good grip on it um, and it's not overly slippery. It doesn't fall apart. Um, and it just knots up really tightly and nicely. So I know it sounds like a commercial for this, but I am pretty obsessed with it. So that's what we're going to use. And I'm going to start by, we're going to, we're going to, um, use two strands and the first strand I'm going to pull off is about a wingspan. So your wingspan, your, you know, hand to hand if you put your arms out straight. Unfortunately, I can't show you that hilarious view on, on the camera. Um, but I'm gonna start with cutting um, my, that's gonna be my shortest piece. And then you're gonna want another strand of this that's about two and a half wingspan. Now you may not need all of that. I always cut more, unfortunately, than I should but I'd rather have more uh, than not enough. So let me do that off camera. I'm gonna do two. And if you could only see how funny this looks. Um, <laughs> okay, I got about two and a half there. And then I'm gonna cut that from the little package and set that aside. And I still have a ton of that left, which is great. Um, so let me put this out of the way. Now, this is probably the hardest part for me. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that my cord here is kind of, I've got it at the, the center point. Now, 
I'm going to do something a little bit crazy. I'm going to grab my lobster claw and I'm going to string it on to one end of this cording. And I'm going to get it to my center point. And let me make sure I'm still at center here. So I'm at center. Okay. So I've got my lobster on. If it will focus for me. There we go. Got my lobster on. And I'm just going to um, do an overhand knot here and secure that lobster claw onto the cord. I want to get it. So I didn't quite get it as close as I would like, but for the sake of this project, we'll be fine. Um, so I've got my I've got my lobster claw secured. Now um, we're going to want to put this onto the loom. So hopefully Deb can remember exactly how she did this the other day. So I'm going to pick one. I'm going to pick one um, of the Juliana. These are um, teeth. Yes. No. I'm going to put that through so we've got it on secured on one of the bottom ones and then i want the this to be these two cords to be as close together as possible so literally i'm just i've just got one one tooth so this is just straddling one tooth and then what we want to do and again this is crazy we're going to string beads on before we tie this onto the loom. Now, it's gonna take a little bit to get these on here, um, but believe it or not, these do, and I need to sit down now because I've been standing to do this. So we're gonna put these beads onto our two strands. And I just need to get this just right so it will go. And the waxed polyester will stay pretty, um, will stay pretty um, together on those ends. I promise you once I get the first one on, then it will be easier. But I'm just gonna get, slide those onto our little button and then pull that onto my cord. And if you um, if you guys saw my last project, um, we actually added beads to the you know to the strands before we tied everything down there too. And um, we're gonna we're gonna get them out of our way when we're working with them. So I'm just stringing them on to get them on. And these particular beads, because they are multiple colors, I tried to kind of make the, the trios kind of different trios. So you've got enough beads to have, you know, several different colorway trios. Um, but you could pattern this however you'd like. If you wanna do three of the copper ones, three of the, these pinky purple ones. Um, you've got enough beads to really pattern this out however you would like. And um, make it your own design. And I know this is not the most exciting part watching me string these on, but I think it's good for you guys to see the the laborious part of this, because this probably is the hardest part of the project. Getting the cording onto the loom and then getting the beads onto the cording and getting it all ready to go. Now this bead, I think has a little bit of paint in there. So I'm just gonna get that out of the way with a little beading all giving me trouble. So, and these, um, these button beads, I like them in a trio because they, they kind of interconnect and they make that really cool little pattern. Um, so you can, um, 
you can see when when they're together, they sort of naturally go in a in the right direction to um, like they're not going to be all in line with next to each other. They're going to kind of flip flop and get into a really cool cluster shape. So that, but you could you could even do one or two if you like if you like the look of that better. Um, but I I like the idea of this little sort of cluster of beads, and hopefully. I can get all of these on here. I'm sorry, this is, it's harder to do this on camera than it looks. <laughs> um, so we're gonna put this guy. So I, um, I found that when I did this project and I got started, I put on, let's see, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven trios. But I found um, that starting with a smaller number of trios was a little bit better, a little bit easier, because you didn't have as many beads on the loom as you were kind of adding. So um, what that means is if you don't add all seven of your trios, you will have to at some point when you're ready, remove one end. So untie one end and um, add more beads, you know, add more beads and then retie it onto the loom, which shouldn't be an issue, shouldn't be a problem. Um, this material is easy enough to work with that you shouldn't have a problem. Now, I just trimmed off my ends, actually just made it worse. So I want to keep my ends kind of fresh to get all these beads on. So I'm sorry, this is not the most exciting part of this. I should have actually strung the beads on first for you guys. So you can, you can string all seven of your clusters or you can string on a few of the clusters. And I think I'm gonna start by showing you guys with just a few of the clusters because um, it's taking me a long time to get these on here, longer than I recall. It took me to put these on here. You got, um, it's 222. So, I mean, how, I think you're fine. The macrame part is really, um, to me, the fastest thing. Yeah. Um, so I'm just struggling to get, it, it is, you know, Friday afternoon. <laughs> been oh, a busy please. week. I hear, let me tell you, last night I'm, I, I just, I even said, gosh, I hope I, I, said all the right words because man i was beat yeah i oh there we go all right i've almost got the third trio on here good lord um but yeah this is could you this thread is the... that needle could you thread that stuff the goo the wax that you're using and onto a needle and then put them through the bead you... or are you like constantly yeah would that be too much um, I don't know. Um, that's a good question. Okay. Um, it's, it's, says, pretty, uh -huh. it's pretty thin. Maria pretty says thin. you have more patience than I do. I would revert to a collapsible needle. <laughs> I think yes. when you're working on it, um, uh, uh, without the cameras, right like it, yeah it, it never fails like that happens yeah it's just a process but yeah, it's a good I idea had... to like let everybody kind of see your little tips like are you cutting that now at an angle to make it more like a point i'm trying that but it's actually not working the way that i would like it to that way so um, well so it's it actually works better when it's a like a straight cut oh, um okay so so definitely want to work with a bead that has a decent hole. I mean, that's 
that's definitely a good i a definitely good idea, right? When when it comes to this uh, product yes. you're using right now, yes, yes. And hey, they're I, an amazing they're an amazing company. Like I can't enunciate their name either. Goo Goopin, they've been around forever. They've been around forever. Yeah, yeah. and they're this, they're if I'm not mistaken, they're in Philly. I think they're outside of Philly. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. They um, this product <laughs> is being promoted pretty heavily by John Bede right now as a, you know, one of their new exciting products. Um, oh, good. Okay. Well, yay. So it's kind of a hot topic thing for them. Nice. All right. So gosh, darn. Oh, I've almost got it. Almost, almost got it. And you know what you can do too, is if you see you've yes. got. Bring them in, bring in those flats, bring in, bring whatever. in the tools. Yeah. All right. So I'm just going to start with okay. three to show you guys. And if we don't, if we don't get through all of it, that's okay. You'll get the, you'll get the idea and I can talk through the rest of it. So now I've got my beads on. Okay. Okay. I'm going to remove myself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jules. So let me move all this nonsense out of the way. Got all my little cuts from my cord. So this I would say, so we all, Juliana really likes to, us to have a nice taut um, warp. It's going to be a little tougher with these beads because they're pretty heavy. These are a, a pretty heavy check glass. But what I'm going to do is give it my best shot and I'm going to get them onto one of the teeth down here, pull it back around. Actually, I don't like that particular one where I'm at. Let me put it here. Okay, put it here. Come on now. And then I'm going to pull it around to the back. And then I'm going to tie it as tight as I can. But the thing is, I want to be able to undo this again, which I've been able to with a beading awl, um, you know, when I've been, when I've worked it before. And so it's, I've been able to un get it undone and I'm just tying a little bow there and then getting my cords out of the way. Now my beads have all slid up here. I want them all to go down here and be out of my way. And now I need to get on my other strand of cord. So this one's a lot longer and a little trickier because it's so long. So let me get these guys out of the way. Let me move all of this out of the way because Lord knows where it will end up. Had a little seed bead incident earlier this week. <laughs> I'm sure you've all experienced the beads going everywhere in your studio or in your craft room. And then you have to figure out where they all went. Okay, this one, I want it to be really close to this middle. So this is our center section. This is what we're going to be macrameing on. So I want my second cord to be just right up next to it. So I want one tooth to separate from these, from this center um, warp. So I'm going to pull this down here onto three of the teeth. And then I'm just going to set it right next to, right next to that first warp. If you can see that. So they're really close together. And then I'm going to pull it down and also put it in that same placement. And I'm just checking my, and the beads are gonna be kind of here in the way, but that's okay because we're gonna be working around them. And you just get your recording where you need it to be. So I'm putting it right there next to it. And then I'm going to get down here and tie this one on as well. Oh no, you know what, what am I saying? 
We're not tying this on at all. What am I saying? Dub. We're not tying this on. We're we're going to get it on back in the back. Okay, let's rewind this part of the story. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. It really is. It's Friday and I'm tired too. Not for the same reasons Juliana is, but I'm tired too. All right. We're still going to come up here just like I started it. And we're going to get right up next to it. Okay. Now, starting over from this part of the story, we're going to start our macrame. So if any of you have done any macrame, probably in my view, the easiest macrame stitch or motion is um, a square knot. So I'm going to start a square knot and I always, so I always start with the D or, or the, yeah, the D and then you're gonna, so you're, make sure this stays in here. You're gonna take this cord, pull it off to the side, the cord in your right hand you're going to go over the cord on your left and pull that other that right hand cord up through and behind that um, that center warp and then you're going to create a p and pull that up or under to complete the full square knot. And you know what? I just lost my placement here. Let me make sure I got it in the right spot. Yes, okay. So now I've got a knot here, so this is secure. So this is now tight. So let me show you, show you up close. I've got just one teeny tiny square knot. And to start um, to start the project, you just need about six square knots to get going. That'll be kind of a little lead in to your beads. So I'm gonna do two square knots again. And if you've not done this before, this really is very easy to do. You're gonna push that cord, the, the left cord over your middle warps Take your right hand cord and push it under and into that D and then pull. And it's just gonna cinch up a nice pretty knot. And then you're gonna take the other side, your right hand cord, pull that left hand cord up into it. And because you've got so much cord, it takes a little bit to pull it through. Now you've got two really, really pretty little nice micro knots. And I'm just going to get this lead section done. So this is knot number two and a half and three. So the full square knot is making sure that you do the knot on both sides. There's also a stitch where you can just do one, one um, half of the square knot and it creates kind of a, a curve, which you could absolutely do with this um, project. So if you don't like the full square knot, it's too, you know, it's too much of a pain to go back and back and forth to do those. Um, you could do the half, half, um, square knot and it will just be kind of a curvy look, which is actually kind of cool and would be interesting with these beads. I think I actually started this thinking that's what I was going to do, but I just love the clean look of, you know, a full square knot. So now I've got, I just kind of count the bumps on the side. That's what I call them. One, two, three, four. So I've got four. I'm going to do a couple more. And then, guys, we're going to add beads to the mix. 
And this is kind of um, this is kind of nice because you've got you've got real a nice light background to be able to see what you're doing. So this dark cord, this is actually the black version, shows up really nicely on this light wood. So come on now, come through there. All right. All right, so this is my little starting section. Just a little, little bit of something to get us started. And this is now very secure onto the loom as well. So you see, we're just using the tiniest bit of this loom. Um, so we've got, you could do this on a smaller, you know, on a smaller scale uh, loom like the little ear, I'm thinking about doing something like this on the earring um, loom. All right, I pushed up a trio of beads. See how they just kind of, they kind of bunch together. They, they just want to naturally go into that formation. You want that, you want that to happen. And we're going to create a square knot around this. And the cording's actually going to just settle into that little trio of beads and it's gonna kind of fit into kind of the channel between them. So I'm just gonna pretend like they're, they're not really there. I'm just gonna do the same thing, do my square knots just like I would if I was just knotting onto the um, cord itself. So it's kind of grouping around that top bead or pulling around that top bead. And then I do wanna make sure that I finish and do the second half of the knot and get this nice and secure. So this, this um, waxed cord has a nice grip on it. So it's going to hold onto there. So now you see you've got this, this little cradle you've created for this little grouping of beads. So it's nicely holding that pattern. And I did four knots in between each group. You could do less, you could do more. Um, you could add more beads if you want. And certainly if you want to make your bracelet bigger than mine, so I have like a, six and a half inch wrist. So the one with the seven groups fits me perfectly, but you may have to add more if you've got a, a little bit of a bigger wrist. So, but you can add as many beads as you want. You could do, you know, you could do a much different pattern of this. You could macrame all the way to the center point and do some groupings in the center if you so desire to do that. So just a, once you, once you kind of get the concept down, you can, you can change it up and do whatever you'd like to do. And I, I see, you know, possibilities of this same project with different beads too. You don't have to use the button beads. They just have a really cool look to them because of their shape. So they, they make a, a really dramatic look. So now I've got, I've got my little set of knots next to the beads there. So my starting point, my little cradle, my four knots there. And then I'm gonna pull up my next trio and they just slide right up into their formation the way they like to sit. And then I've got my knot, I've got my cords all messed up down here at the bottom. Okay, so now we're just going to knot and it just naturally pulls it right, it pulls them right into place. So it creates that little cradle uh, of that top bead. And I like to pull it pretty tight, especially around the beads so that they're holding it into that lovely pattern. And then we're just gonna do the rest of our 
little knots here. Now, something that um, I'm experiencing that I experienced when I first tried it is because you've got the grooves on the loom at the bottom and you've got so much cord, it's gonna wanna, it's gonna wanna get tangled up down here. So you just kind of have to be aware that you've got a lot of cord and you don't want it to get all tangled up in the teeth down there. So just something to be aware of. And this is a lot of cord to work with. So just have to, you guys are probably used to that with projects when you're actually weaving too. So putting our spacing in between and I like to pull this cording nice and tight for these little knots and try and get them to be as, you know, the same as possible, as, as like as possible and get them nice and neat. And I have to always kind of double check that I've got the right amount. And then I've got three more beads. I'm just gonna slide them up. And another thing about these beads is they make a really beautiful sound when they, um, when they connect with each other. They just have a really nice sound. I don't know, I'm, I'm geeky like that with beads. <laughs> So just gonna do the same thing, make my first knot and tighten that guy up. And it just, just gets that bead cradled so nicely. And then get my other knot going and secure those beads in there. So now guys, we've got two or three trios of beads. And I love the way these beads look. They're just so cool. And these colors are so nice. They, I think they um, make this bracelet incredibly versatile for whatever you're gonna wear. It's so colorful, you can just put it on with anything. So I'm just creating, come on, I'm just creating my knots. And I like to make sure too that when I'm doing this that I've got plenty of clearance on both sides of my workspace because inevitably you're gonna catch something and something's gonna fly off and join you in your project, something that you didn't intend to join you. So, so we're gonna get this other knot in. And I am, Juliana, are we good for time? Hello. Hello, how are we Hello. doing? Uh, it is 2.43. Okay. So I don't know what uh what is left but i just have to say this is so stinking cool and it's i'm always like blown away when you take one of the looms and you do something on it that's like not the original intention you know not that i have these big intentions for my looms because really they're birthed more from the story of life than they are anything else so this is really cool. Like, like we've not, we've not done this. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think we've done this. <laughs> so yeah. it's so exciting to see. Um, and, and once you get all those little boogers on there, <laughs> yeah, you know, when you can get them, you know, pretty strong and everything, um, yeah. it really goes very fast. Yeah. Very the fast. The, um, and the act of macrame, I mean, it's, to me, it's very much like weaving. Um, it's just yeah. very methodical and, you know, you can do it in complete silence. You mm. can listen to a book, you can yeah. 
listen to, I've been listening to, you know, holiday music in here and just kind of, you know, macraming my little heart out. Yeah. And it's just, it's very calming and soothing. And um, I feel like I'm almost jipping the rest of this loom because I'm just using this tiny little bit. <laughs> But it's, I mean, this really works. I mean, it really works yeah. for this kind of a project. If you don't have, like a lot of people will macrame with um, like a clipboard or some kind yeah. of board. And they, uh, that's very hard for me because I, I can't really, I can't really get around the cording and I can't really see it well enough. So this right. is a great, if you don't have a tool to um to macrame on now you do because yeah. you've got this so yeah no um, i love it i love the versatility of the looms i love when a designer customer anybody like i love when people get a hold of the looms and they do things and i'm just like it's like when christian ross took the large at the time it was the weaving goddess when we introduced her on jewelry television back in 2019 and I see her in a photo with the with it upside down, and I'm like in between. I thought she had it in between her let in between her knees, but it was like in between the couch or something. <laughs> and I'm like, and she's got it marked up, and I'm like, what? And what is that girl doing? And she figured out how to knit a damn scarf on the large. How the heck? Yes. How the heck? So <laughs> I. Oh my god! Sorry, I didn't mean to say the D word. Um, I'm such a potty mouth. Hardly. Sorry. I know. Hardly. <laughs> Hardly. Bring in the Chardonnay. Um, but yeah, like I just, I love it. I love when people take the looms and they can come up with some traditional things. And, and, and like you say, you, you might've been using a clipboard or you could have been using some other type of tool. And now here you have the sun weaver and, and she's macro man. So it's very cool. I love it. I love, so what, love, love, love it. So what I just did was I untied my my warp. So I untied so all I had it was tied in like a little bow, which I know is probably not very secure, but you saw me do all that and it didn't, you know, it yeah. didn't come off. But because we are macrame up here. This is all not, I mean, this is all together. Like it's not going to um, come apart. So I just put on another bead. Let's see if I can get another trio on just so that I can show you. Um, oh, you can cool. Let me get rid of myself. I'm going to check out. <laughs> I'll be in the back. Just call for me if you want me back. Okay. All right. So I've got another bead on figure out what you guys are seeing here. So I've got another bead on here. Oh, wait, you know what? I pulled the cords the wrong way. Oh, gosh, darn. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, let's get it on the same way. We're going to put that on the same way. So you've got, you've got your, your project still intact, and you can add more beads. So I would have added probably I would have tried to add all seven um, groupings I think if the you know if the beads weren't so hard to get through on camera um, so I wouldn't have had to add beads just yet but again you're gonna have beads sitting down here so when you start to get closer to the end you're going to find that you might need this space. So, um, you know, you might have to add your beads once you've kind of gotten a little bit further along, but I think you could add, easily add seven um, groupings. You could easily add seven groupings to this um, and get, you know, get it all set up and then you wouldn't have to take it off. But you see, I, I, Got it off there, no problem. It's just getting the dang beads on to actually string this next grouping. But um, it's not a problem to take it off. And I'm trying to use a variation of the colors, break up the 
colors. So now I've got my next group. So I'm going to, I'm just going to tie this back on to show you. This is how easy it is. So let me move this guy out of the way. I'll pull this down. Oops and get us tied and secured down in the back. Just get us into a little bow. I know I can tie a bow. All right, so I got that secured on. And you know, it's not the tightest warp on the planet. Definitely not, but I've now got three more beads on. And actually that's really not very tight. Let me try that again. Yeah, that was not tight enough. So get that tied in a little bow. See if it's a little bit tighter. That's a little better. Okay, so now I gotta just make sure when you sort of reorient yourself and you've got um, you've got more beads on, just make sure that your cords are um, are on either side of your project again. So make sure that they they haven't um, gotten all tangled up and somewhere crazy in the room. So I'm just gonna do the same thing I was doing before and get my first half of my square knot secured. Second square knot, pull that cord through. And then I'm just gonna do my four knots. And this is a little looser, but it's okay. It's still holding it securely for me. And I'm just gonna do three more. And I really like the smaller cording. Like I said, I really dig it, but you could get a larger cord. You could, you could find a you know, a, a different kind of cording here. I'm, this is not something that has to be done with this particular cord. I don't have stock in this cord or anything, but I just really like the, um, the feel of it. And I like the look of this micro macrame, microme. So, but you could do you could do all different kinds of options with this. Did you get the idea of it? You've got, you've got something fun. So same, same thing, got the same pattern going. Those top beads, so that top bead gets cradled by that cord. And then you've got two, and then this, you know, when you wear this, the beads will just kind of move around. They still stay in position, but they, you know, kind of move around on your wrist, you know, and they keep that little cluster formation. So Juliana, in the interest of time, I think what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna create a little bit of a mini bracelet here. Um, just gonna gonna finish this one as if it were long enough to um, this could fit um, Marlon Brando maybe his uh, his peepaw yeah or you know what not for nothing it's you know you can add that to a keychain adding stuff to your keychains yeah. is like all the rage with the you know the, yes. the people the, yes um, yeah, yeah the peeps the peeps out there yes. so um, I dig it like Let's, go for it I think it's good yeah. stuff I'm gonna let Marlon Brando in he's scratching at the door so i'll go off and you can you can we'll concentrate. finish okay yeah. okay 
All right, so now we are going to release this little cool guy from the goddess. So I'm gonna take this end off. And now we didn't do much back here because we um, all we did was get this um, this clasp on. Now um, you'll see I've got a separate loop. And if I remember, I, I remedied that. So we're gonna play with that in a second. But my whole bracelet is secure. These knots are holding all these beads in place. So I'm not worried at this point about these, you know, this coming unraveled or anything. So what I did now, you guys that are more experienced might have different ideas about how to finish this. There's, and I know Juliana always talks about know how you're going to finish something when you start it. And I really didn't know when I did my first one. So I kind of, I kind of, um, I winged it a little bit. So I've got a lot of cord left. I told you, um, you know, this was about two and a half wingspans. We still would have quite a bit of cord left if we would have finished this bracelet. But what I like to do is um, cut kind of all this excess off the end so that I can work with the end that um, I'm trying to work with and get my, my closure done. So, and, and I want to tie a knot um, to get us started. So I'm going to snip this off and this, these cords will all be uh, the same size or close, you know, close enough. So the first thing I want to do is I want to tie an, a knot at this end. So you see, we've got our, our little macrame knots, nice and clean. What I wanna do is just tie a knot at the very top of those square knots. And this is a little bit tricky because you gotta get four cords through there. At least it's tricky for me. <laughs> so I'm gonna pull those cords and I wanna get right there at the end of my square knots. I just had a cat walk in here. It's kind of scaring me. <laughs> um, so I put I put a knot right here at the end of my square knots. So it's just making sure that those um, square knots are tight and and you know captured. They're not going to go anywhere. So the next thing I did was I, I know I've got this at this end, which I, I'm going to deal with this. This is this is not working for me. So we'll 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 remedy that. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is take this nice chonky um, jump ring and it's nice bright silver. And I'm going to put all four cords through it. And let's see if I can do this on camera for you guys. I'm gonna pull it down and then I'm going to tie a knot to secure it. So I'm just gonna do an overhand knot. And this is tricky because I want it to be close to my um, the end of my bracelet. So I'm actually gonna use my beading awl to help me get it in the right spot. This is a little bit tricky. I'm, I used to be really awful at knots and I, I think now I'm just sort of awful at knots. So I'm gonna pull that and then give that a tug. So it's not super tight so I want to I want to do a couple more knots, and what I like to do um, is I like to take two of the cords, so to grab a couple of them and separate them from the other ones, and I pull it around around the 
where the knot is and I tie it like around the base. I know this probably sounds strange, but I'm trying to get that, um, that uh, jump ring stabilized. So then I'm gonna pull it back around the other side and stabilize it on the other side. So I've got a knot through the ring, then I've got a knot around one direction and then around the other direction. Now, another thing that I did is I used my friend GS Hypo Cement. <laughs> so this is my, my um, glue of choice for anything that is um, cord related. So this is, I'm, I'm not gonna do it um, right now because we, we don't wanna end up with glue everywhere. But that's um, what I would do is dab just a little tiny drop on one side, one tiny drop on the other side, and then you can cut this and you could cut it all the way up to the knot if you want, or you could leave a little fringe. Um, I did leave a little fringe on my original piece. Um, just some little fringies. Looks a little boho that way. So... How are we going to contend with this? <laughs> so I think, I think we can do something different. So I definitely want these, I definitely want this lobster claw. So I'm trying to think, I don't have a lot to work with. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do an, I'm going to try and do an overhand knot. I don't know if I've got enough to do that. I don't think I do. So let me think here. So we've got, we've got one loop and then the, our, our lobster claw is on the other. So maybe what I want to do is cut, I might cut this off and cut this in half and see if I can reattach this. So this is going to be risky, may not work, but we're going to try it. I'm actually going to cut. So this one will be a touch shorter. And then I got to cut this off. This might not work. So Uh, I have an idea though. So um, Juliana's comment about um, about this being a purse charm. Guess what? That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> and I'm not. And I'm going to. I'm gonna. <laughs> we're just gonna. Juliana, you said I. I. I'm. Um, I'm not afraid to, <laughs> to take chances. Yeah. Well, I'm. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a chance, but. For starters, I'm going to show you what might make this a little bit cuter as a purse charm. Well, so. I think too in this in this situation with this project, Deb, that this is a technique, right? So like, yes, it's so cool what you did because people are going to have to practice. They're going to have to best understand all the little ins and outs and twists and turns. So. I mean, because I'm following along, but I'm like, I would probably end up doing what you just did before I tried to like go the distance. So I think it's wonderful. And yes. not for nothing, it also, that box having a plethora of beads in it, um, now you can just make more gifts. Like you still got time. It's only the eighth. Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> So I started pulling this cord apart. So you you can do that and make this a fringe, okay? okay? Then let's pretend like we we already glued this. And I'm gonna just leave some tiny little fringes there. And then I'm gonna reach behind me. Call me back in. I'm gonna grab some oval jump rings, oops, a couple of oval jump rings and my lobster. And we are going to make this a purse charm. <laughs> That's what we're doing. Um, 
I think for, I think for my bracelet, I'm going to, when, when I get this on here, I'm going to pick my bracelet back up and I think I'm going to be able to explain to you what I did. I hope I can explain it. Um, some, the, the closures to me are always the hardest. Um, and I think that's, you know, that's the, that is one of the big challenges. When you innovate something new here on the loom, you kind of have to figure out, you know, how are you gonna, how are you gonna close it? So here's our little, our little purse dangle, which we didn't really start this project making that. And I, and you can work with this little end down here to get it like dangly and cute. Um, but I got, I got this guy on and I feel like maybe I had, I had more of a tail when I attached the jump ring. So when we originally put this on the loom, let me grab some of my extra stuff. Just grab a piece. I think I may have, I may have tied a knot, a knot somewhere and like had more cord back here. Maybe I tied a knot here, gave myself more cord and had my lobster attached and then cut the lobster off. Or maybe I didn't have the lobster on. I know, I feel like I had the lobster on, but I must have given myself more back here. Um, and if I can figure that out and remember how I did it, I'll, I'll take a photograph and I'll put it out in the group for you guys to see. But the key is you want to be able to do kind of the same thing I did here is get that lobster secured and get a couple of knots around the edge. So kind of back, you want to go through, you want to have at least two pieces of cord through the lobster and then, you know, wrap your knots around the, um, the warped section and the macrame section so that this is on securely. And I did use glue on this side as well. And I already fringed this out. So you can see how this, um, how this polyester cord fringes. So I, I'm not sure I was in camera for that entire discussion there, but I, I have two cords through the lobster and knotted around one direction, knotted around the other direction glued and then fringed out my extra piece once I cut off the length of it. So I'll have to go back and see if I can figure out how I had, how I knotted this on. Cause I definitely had more cord to work with mm. when I did this one. So I think it's all right. I failed no, you guys on, on showing you that, but look, we have a cute bird no. charm too. Yeah, no, you did great. No, I love this. See, this is here. Come bring back your sexy face. <laughs> Hang on. Let me turn off my camera and I'll flip myself. Get my camera turned around. <laughs> Are you coming back? Oh, no. I am. Oh, there you are. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that I think that this is exactly um it's just truth. It's just it doesn't matter. I mean, we've both been at this for like ever and you know, you're constantly if you don't try to do something and I don't know, I love it. I um sometimes get a little, well, I don't get a lot of it, but it usually just comes from one person out there who seems to want to be mean to me. And, um, and it's always about like this idea that, you know, perfection and stuff like that. And it's bullshit. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. This is like the, you know what? I'm tired. I normally don't cuss so much. <laughs> it's okay. I guess I but just it's like we shouldn't have to apologize. There really shouldn't be, um, you know, Aline. I was blessed to learn from Aline. Yes, 
she had some really strict ways of teaching and she was always just trying to help us, you know, get to this level of professionalism so that when we presented something that the front side of our project and the back side of our project looked great. And, and, mm -hmm. and so I love that because I always strived to do my best work, but that's like one thing. Yeah. That's like one thing. Yeah. That's like, um, I'm doing a project for NAMTA. I've been asked to do a project. I'm going to be a part of creating. Nice. Um, I got the letter I in the word creativation, right? Oh, cool. Yeah. And so obviously, like when I'm producing that over the next couple of months, I'm going to be, you know, very into my detail, very into my process, et cetera. But there's all this other freedom to just explore. And it doesn't always have to be at like this unbelievable level to where people can't achieve that. I don't ever yeah. want anyone to look at my work and go, oh, that girl, she is just way too much. Like I'll never be able to do that. I want them to, to look at the simplicity of, um, hold on. I know there's <laughs> something here. <laughs> Let me there's look at something. My <laughs> You know, like the simplicity of just doing the awareness cuff, right? Three, yeah. three rows across, six millimeter, yeah. one hole, shiny, beautiful bead, put on the flipping button, you know, warp with your hem teak and call it a day. It doesn't have to always be science. Like, yeah. back off, folks. Like, well, you know, and I loved what you just did. It was I perfect. feel it. I feel like this is, this is, I mean, I, I, I only did the one, so I am not yeah. really practiced at it, but, um, <laughs> but I feel like this is great for just showing you guys that you can do even more on this loom. You can do some yes. macrame. I'm, I'm even thinking, wouldn't it be cool to combine macrame and weaving in some way? And that's kind of where I started with the thought process was, could I do both? But yeah. that was a bit for me to take on for this project, but that could be something that we could do. We could try. Yeah. Um, now that we know we can do, we know we can weave and now we know we can do macrame. So could we do both? Why not? Why not? Yeah. So, <laughs> and we're not going to know unless somebody tries. Right. So I, I love where these, these Thursdays are just all, I want them to be like happy hour. <laughs> like, I just want to be able to take all the blessings of the looms, come to the table. And, and I don't ever doubt that anyone doesn't bring their heart to this show. You know, like it's all heart. Like Sarah always says all heart, you know, from yes. Jesse James, she always says that. And I love I that love because I, I feel like that's so much of like how just most of us are like, we just are so passionate. Danielle is in the background here. I don't know if you saw that or not, Deb, but Dan, Danielle's been out here um, oh. um, cheering you on and talking about. Oh. Yeah. So, you know, and that's in, and, and, and the whole community. So it's all good stuff. Like <laughs> I want to see people try this. I yes, want to see too. people try this and I'd love to see. So if somebody has this box, and they use these beads like how did you finish it how did you make your closure exactly. um exactly. that's the part i struggle with the most <laughs> for anything on the loom i yeah. like i'm like well, how am i gonna i have this great idea but how am i gonna finish it <laughs> I, i'm right there with you girlfriend last night i was doing uh what was i doing i was doing that over there and I was like, oh, because Rhonda said, oh, I could see this wood leather. Oh. I'm like, yeah, but I use wildfire, dang it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so then I was like, oh, poop, I didn't, you know, like I'm always like, no, how well, you're going to finish it before you start it. And then I do the same thing. I do. Yeah. And Danielle yeah. says, you have inspired a macrame spree for me. Oh, that's great. I yeah. I am just, I'm obsessed with this, this cording and... For me, it just, it opened up like something in me to do this again. Like I, I've macrameed off and on and it just was like, eh, not, you know, 
but now I'm just yeah. super like super into it and trying to find different patterns and different things to do. And these beads were just so cool with yeah. the, the button style. They're so, yeah, those beads were some of the beads that I found in that house on the last day of our trip to the Czech Republic. <laughs> And you, I, I literally have just, <laughs> I've just been feeding the creative soul members with the beads from, from that trip. Cause they never made it to the website. In fact, we're, we're doing <laughs> December right now. And so my mom's in there counting beads and bagging beads and, <laughs> and all that good stuff. And, and so, yeah, you know what, it just needs to be fun. Yeah. You know, there's a time for like real, precision and yeah. you know here's here's how you do this to this and that's cool like you know but i i don't know i also just love being able to take the products and figure out something different so i appreciate you so much well i appreciate you and i'm i'm inspired to try kind of that next level of this with, yeah. you know, something else. So, um, yeah. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to tackle that next, but, um, I am going to try and figure out how I finished this bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. How did I do that? I should have taken pictures. I normally do. And I forgot this time. Oh so. my God. That's so funny. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You're in the group. That's a great thing. Like, and, I love when everyone communicates and just kind of comes back with, Hey, I figured it out. They were, I can't remember. It was a couple, not even that long ago, but man, I did something and the group gave me such grace. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. I don't know. I'm always asking for grace. <laughs> we but, all need it. We all yeah, need it. You know, it's just, yeah, it's all good stuff. So, um, thank you everyone who is watching and all of your, somebody did, Somebody said something and I was going to ask you, but I didn't want to interrupt you. Mm. Nothing. And Jane and all the love and the kisses jumping and wait. Oh, was that it? Jumping on now. Is that Ceylon? No, it's tell me the name again of that product. It's, um, it's by Guten, Guten Broad. Guten, I think it's Guten Broad. Guten Broad. It's spelled G U D. E B R O D. Yeah. And it is waxed polyester wow. thread and it's 0.38 millimeters. And you can get it at Michael's and yeah. um, John Bead. Um, and those are the only two sources I know of, but it's it's made in the USA. It's a great product. Yes. Yeah. No, they're they've and they've been around for ever in a day. So Stephanie Howard said, can you put glue or fray check on the end of the thread to stiffen it? Maybe she's, you, this was in the beginning. So she could have been talking yeah. about like how you were having a hard time feeding it through the threading. Vehicle. Yeah, I think you can. Um, you could, because it's waxed, you could probably also use wax. Like if you have one of the little yeah. wax things, yeah. you could probably keep waxing it. Okay. Um, but I think fray check would work. I've well, never tried it on wax thread, but it might work. Danielle saying yes. And so um, oh. knowing that Danielle is a representative, obviously from John Bead, she's probably got you know. the whole kit and caboodle. So it also works with class co co collapsible eye needle, which is what Maria said. That was earlier. a great idea. And she says, I what? dip. What's happening? Oh, where'd you get fireworks? I don't know. I went what? like this, and all of a sudden, it gave me fireworks. Oh, my God. That was so weird. That was weird. Okay. Danielle says, I dip the ends into, no, I dip the ends in Insta Needle. Oh. Insta I don't know what that is. I'm writing that down. <laughs> yeah. Insta Needle. Danielle, you need to hook some girlfriends up. We don't know. Insta needle. Insta needle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm on that immediately after this. <laughs> okay. And Caroline Bishop <laughs> says you are a firework. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. That was, so that was very weird. I didn't get weird. one. How come I didn't get no fireworks? You know what? I I saw um I saw Neelay 
on with somebody once and he did a heart and it like hearts oh see what are you oh. now it only does it once there we go it did it again well why i what how i don't <laughs> know it's magical <laughs> what is happening can the other folks see it or is it just you and i can you guys see the hearts no because caroline said you are a firework Deb is doing the magic trips. Why don't I have magic tricks? I don't know. You should be able to. So hold the heart and then hold the heart. Hold it, like hold it and see if it, and then it. Oh, and then it's got to start. What's, no, weird, though, what's <laughs> weird though is when Neele, when it happened to Neele, he was on this side of the screen too. So maybe it's just like the guest. I don't know. So weird. My, my mind is blown. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't even know who we are now. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. I she said Robinson, that also happened on a soft flex live. Huh. And Maria it's... can see it. Rosario can see it. Stephanie can see it. <laughs> Ileana. So Jules got no heart. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> you, cause I'm giving, <laughs> we're giving all the heart to you. I'm giving all the hearts to you, Juliana. Can you do shamrocks too? <laughs> That's funny. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. Well, Ooh. I got to, um, I got to regroup and go see, go at some point, try to get over to the hospital. So um, Deb, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I know that the creative soul members are going to love this. They love being inspired by just ideas. They're, they're so amazing. They're talented and great group. fabulosity peeps. And they, they just love being sparked. So I know, I know that you brought that. Well, great. Thank you so yeah. much for having me. The box is lovely. I have another right. idea in the works for that. Okay. So, um, All right. I'll let you know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm so well, glad I to be here with everybody. Good. Good. Well, we love you and we love your sexy hair. So keep that up. <laughs> <laughs> Will do. <laughs> All Or it's like still early, it's not even happy hour yet. It's not even happy hour yet. I don't know what I'm gonna do with myself. <laughs> Tonight might be the night. <laughs> yeah, it very well could be. But I hope everything goes well, Julia. Okay, hey, listen, have a great holiday season, all your friends and your family, and um happy new year if i don't see you and definitely let's play again in the new year for sure and yeah and um i'll see you hopefully in tucson that's hopefully the plan so yes ma'am for sure please yes yeah okay so. all right honey thank you bye everybody bye everyone thank you for being bye. here thank you for being here something like it hot <laughs> caroline All right, ending stream. I get to touch the red button. <laughs>